Greetings once again in the name of our lovely Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is Sanctifying Truth with Evangelist Mike Brown. This will be episode 62, July 24th, 2019. We praise God for the privilege to be able to bring the words of the living God to you once again. If you have your Bible, we'll be in John chapter 6. Begin reading verse number 37. Today we're looking at the effectual call, the effectual call, which is to all men, as we're going to see and prove from the scriptures. In John chapter 6 and verse 37, our Lord Jesus Christ himself is speaking, and he says, All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out, or no way will I cast him out. So we see man's duty is to come to the Lord Jesus Christ. In verse number 44, our Lord said, No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught of God. All sinners are taught their need of a Savior at one point in their life. We're all shown that we're needy, hell-deserving sinners. And my friend, we're lost in our dead in our sins, dead in trespasses and sins against God. And we must be born again according to the Scriptures. And that includes all. Every man, therefore, that hath heard and hath learned of the Father, the man has heard the Gospel, he's heard the good news, he's heard of the and learned of the Father, cometh unto me. Well, my friend, listen, you can shrug that off, you can continue in darkness, you can stay in the world, you can say no to the wooing of the Holy Spirit of God, and my friend, you'll die and go to hell, and you'll go there against the will of God. In John chapter 12 and verse 32, our Lord Jesus said, And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw, get it, how many, all men unto me. That includes all, my friend, all. We're about to get into what John Calvin taught with his stinking tulip, but my friend, the Word of God teaches that Jesus Christ died for all. And the effectual call is to all men. That includes you. That includes whosoever will. Let him come. It's an act of the will. Verse 32, And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. This he said, signifying what death he should die. He was lifted up from the earth on the old cruel Roman cross. Now back in John six thirty seven, All that the Father giveth me. Now take your Bible and look in John chapter 17 and verse number 1. In our great high priest prayer, while he is still on earth, he begins his work, office work of a great high priest. And there he is today, seated at the right hand of the Father. And this is just a foreview of his prayer for the church. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power 
over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. My friend, he said in John 14, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I was just uh, witnessing to a Muslim man yesterday who uh, immigrated here to America in 2012, went to Gadsden State Junior College, and learned English. And of course, they believe that Jesus was just another prophet like Mohammed. And all they can do, the best they can do, is good works like any other false religion. I told him the difference in me and him is I know that I have eternal life right now because I'm trusting in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ being lifted up on the cross for my sins after he lived a perfect, sinless life. And then, my friend, he was buried and resurrected from the dead three days after his death, to prove his deity, and then applied his blood on the mercy seat. And he just shook his head. No, no, Jesus Christ is just simply another prophet. So what think ye, friend? Whose son is he? Where did he come from? Where did he go back to? He went to the Father's throne. In John chapter 17, also in verse number 6, if you will look there, the Bible says, I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Verse 10, and all mine are thine, Father, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world. He's looking at the other world. He's looking at going home to be with his Father once again after completing his task. But these are in the world, and I come to thee, Holy Father, Keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept, just like we are kept by the power of God. 1 Peter 1.5 And none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that's Judas Iscariot, who was a devil, John six seventy, that the scripture might be fulfilled. 13, and now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. My friend, we are of God, born of God. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. 18, as thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. When you're reading the truth, my friend, you're reading Jesus Christ. 
They're inseparable. John 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Verse 14, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Verse 20 of John 17, neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me. There is salvation through their Word. There's our responsibility, our word, witnesses unto the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> That's the will of God. So it was God the Father who sent His only begotten Son into this world from the throne of glory. In John chapter 4 and verse number 4, the Bible says, But when the fullness of the time was come when it was time for the Messiah to make his grand entrance into this world through Mary's virgin womb. God sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law. He was made of a woman conceived by the Holy Ghost. Verse 5, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, we're not hoping to be sons. We're not enduring to the end to be sons. My friend, we are sons by faith in the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son, the Holy Spirit, into your hearts. God sent His Son, and then God sent His Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 2. Crying, Abba, Father. That's a term of endearment. You know God is your Father, my friend, when the Holy Spirit of God, who seals you unto the day of the redemption, kicks the devil out of your heart and moves in. And you'll never be the same. My friend, you'll never be uh, satisfied with this present evil world. In John chapter 5 and verse 23, that all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father, he that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father, which hath sent him. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word. That's the power of the word of God. You must hear the word of God. The authorized King James Bible of 1611. 1 Peter 1, 23 being Born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. And this is the word whereby the gospel is preached unto you. He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath, present tense, everlasting life. The Calvinists say, all we have is a hope so salvation. We are hoping, we're doing the best we can. Maybe the Lord will let us in through the pearly gates. Maybe Peter's sitting there at the gate at his desk. We'll find our name because we've done a good enough works to be able to get in. It ain't happening, friend. You must be born again by the Spirit of God and by the words of the living God. He hath everlasting life. God's not an Indian giver. My friend, He don't give and then take it back. Once you became a son of God, you can never go back to being a son of Adam in your spirit. And shall not come into condemnation. That's of your sins. And that's an eternity in hell, but is passed from death unto life. 
That's eternal life, my friend, that the Lord Jesus Christ freely gives to all who will believe in him or, and also own him. John 10, 36, he answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? And Jesus said unto him, Thou hast both seen him, the Messiah, the Savior, himself, and it is he that talketh with thee. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. 1 John 4 and verse 14, And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent the Son to be the Savior of the world, of the whole wide world. That's the reason John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever, here's the sinner's responsibility, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That's the will of God. Back there in John chapter 17 and verse 21, the Bible says that they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee that they also may be one in us. That's the church, the one body of Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 4. And Ephesians 4 and verse 30 says, For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me, and the glory of which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one, I in them, and thou in me, that they may be perfect in one, that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Father, I will, here's the will of God of Jesus Christ, that they also whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovedest me before the foundation of the world. My friend, one day we're going to be with him, we're going to be like him, and we're going to behold him and see him as he is. And he's going to change our vile body and fashion it like unto his glorious resurrected body. John chapter 17, verse 25. O righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me. The Father gave the church, that is all sinners, who will repent and receive the Son as Savior for His reward of living a perfect sinless life, glorifying the Father in all that He did in His earthly life. John 8, 29, He said, I do always those things which please Him, the Father, And he endured the scourging we deserved and the cross for our sins. That's him, my friend. That's the Savior. That's the so great love of God, which passeth understanding. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse number 19. To wit or to know that God was in Christ you understand that, friend? God the Father was in Christ. God the Holy Ghost was in Christ. 
God was the manifestation of the Trinity on this earth. In John chapter 14, verse 9, the Lord Jesus told Philip, He that has seen me has seen the Father. To wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto Himself. God was manifest in the flesh. 1 Timothy 3.16 Not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. There, my friend, is the gospel that the Christian has to preach to the world, the word of reconciliation, being reconciled with God, laying down the sword, laying down all doubts, and everything that stands in between the sinner and God. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For He, God the Father, hath made Him, God the Son, to be sin for us. That's on the cross of Calvary, friend. He who knew no sin became sin for us. The sins of the whole world from Adam to the last sinner were laid on the Lord Jesus Christ. He had sin on him, but no sin in his heart. He was perfect, spotless, blemishless in every way. He became sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. No longer in Adam, but in the Lord Jesus Christ members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. That's the Christian life. Get rid of all weights and sins where you can run an effectual race. And we're doing it, verse 2, looking unto Jesus, the author, and get it, finisher of our faith. What He began in you, He is going to finish, friend. You are His possession. Philippians 1, 6, being confident of this very thing, that He which hath begun a good work in you, will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. Who for the joy that was set before Him, that's the church, the reward of His sufferings, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider Him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. The fainting begins in the minds, my friend, and then works into the heart. If you don't have the whole armor of God on, as described in Ephesians chapter 6, you're a candidate for fainting in your mind. The mind is the battlefield. The mind is where the devil works. And my friend, all, all that the Father giveth me shall come to me. All includes whosoever will. No sinner will be able to shake his fist against God and say, Jesus Christ didn't die for me. I never knew. I never heard. No, my friend, he died for all. And he's not willing. 2 Peter 3, 9, the Bible says, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any 
should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And the Calvinists say that all is all that he died for. My friend, he died for all. Anybody that says he only died for the elect has got the devil working in them. And I doubt they've ever been saved by the grace of God. Matthew chapter 10 and verse number 32. <clears throat> the words of the living God says, with Christ speaking, Whosoever therefore shall confess me, before men. That's the responsibility of the sinner. When God gives him repentance, when he receives the Lord Jesus Christ, he's got to confess Jesus Christ before men to show that he's not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, to show that he's not ashamed of his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Notice what the Lord will do if we'll confess Him before men. Him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. Sinner friend, Jesus Christ is seated right now on the right hand of the throne of God. He is waiting to hear from you. He is waiting to confess you to God the Father and have your name written in the Lamb's book of life. Verse number 33 of Matthew 10, But whosoever, whosoever in verse 32, now whosoever shall deny me before men, like uh, many did in the word of God. Uh, one of the thieves denied him. He said, If thou be the Son of God. The other thief said, Lord, key word, my friend, the password into heaven. Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. But whosoever shall deny me before men, you're ashamed of him. You want to stay in the world. You love the world and the lust thereof. And you don't want to be separated from the world. You don't want to be a castaway from your worldly friends. So you deny the Lord Jesus Christ and his rulership in your life. But get it, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. My friend, listen, you don't want to deny the Lord Jesus Christ. You want to confess him as your Savior. The first thing the Holy Spirit did in my life when I received the Lord, He prompted me to confess Jesus Christ as my Savior before the church where I was saved. I got up before the audience and I told them the Lord Jesus Christ saved my soul from hell. And I was so thankful of it. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 50. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. That's the family of God. Now, Revelation chapter 22 and verse number 17. We're still on whosoever will. My friend, God includes all in this thing. Jesus Christ's precious blood was shed for all. Matthew, uh, Revelation twenty two seventeen, And the Spirit and the Bride, the Bride, the Church, say, the Holy Spirit and the Bride agree, and they say, Come, there's the invitation to the world, come and be saved. Uh, in John chapter 4, that woman, that adulterous woman, said, Come see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Come and let him that heareth say, Come. Christian, you need to be saying to the world, Come. And let him that is a thirst, Come. Are you about ready for a drink of everlasting waters? the water of life, sinner friend, 
Hadn't you had enough of this wicked world's drink? The Bible says, And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. Freely, my friend, the water of life. The free, the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And all you need is one drink. One drink will get you all the way to glory. 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 13, For by one Spirit, Holy Spirit, are we all, that's all who will believe, baptized, Holy Spirit baptism, not water baptism, into one body. That's the church of Jesus Christ. His body. Whether it be Jews or Gentiles. Whether it be bond or free. And have been all made. Get it. To drink into one spirit. That's drinking the waters of life, my friend. The water of life. And that's whosoever will. Let him come. Now, John Calvin, my friend, lived in uh, 1509 to 1564 along in, in France, along with Martin Luther, the German reformer. He lived in 1483 to 1564, and he sparked the great uh, Reformation, German Reformation. But John Calvin was a chief architect of the Protestant Reformation along with Luther and others. Calvin's theology is characterized by the way he looked at predestination. Calvinism is a rare theology, and it can be explained simply using a five-letter acronym, TULIP, T-U-L-I-P. And my friend, I'm here to tell you that's a stinking TULIP. The tulip memory tool was solidified at the Synod of Dort in 1618 to 1619. That was a gathering of Reformed theologians who met in the Netherlands to counter and condemn the teachings of Arminianism. Like Martin Luther before him, John Brake from the Roman Catholic Church and based his theology on the Bible alone, but he perverted the words of the living of God. And my friend, he came out with this stinking tulip. Now, first of all, in the acronym, the T stands for total depravity. That is, the belief in total depravity takes the view that sinfulness pervades all areas of life and human existence. Through the fall of man, humanity is stained by sin in every aspect of the heart, emotions, mind, will, and body. And this means, my friend, people cannot independently choose God. They cannot save themselves. God must intervene to save His people. They are so dead in trespasses and sins, they cannot even call on God. Calvinism insists that God must do all the work from choosing those who will be saved to sanctifying them throughout their lives until they die and go to heaven. My friend, listen. God made man with a will. We are a free moral agent with a free will. We can refuse, we can reject the Lord Jesus Christ or we can receive him. God made us that way. So the T in the tulip is a lie. Next, the U stands for unconditional election. This Calvinist view says God chooses who will be saved because people are dead in their sins. They are unable to initiate a response to God in eternity past, God elected certain people to be saved and the others to go to hell. And that includes babies. Babies go to hell under the Calvinist doctrine because they're not elect of God. If you believe that, my friend, you are crippled too high 
for crutches. The saved people are called the elect in Calvinism. God picks them based not on their personal character or merit or the, anything they can do, including calling on God. They say calling on God, a sinner calling on God for salvation is against God's will. And you trying to get them saved is doing the work of God. My friend Jesus Christ said in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, But ye shall be witnesses unto me. So Jesus Christ calls them liars. The L in the stinking tulip stands for limited atonement. It's the view that Jesus Christ died only for the sins of the elect. And of course, all that go to the Presbyterian and the Primitive Baptist churches and others, they're all the elect, and all their families are the elect. And they have the covenant theology. All their children are elect because they're elect. Limited atonement. That is, the Lord Jesus Christ just died for them and the rest go to hell. Uh, the I in the stinking tulip stands for irresistible grace. That is the belief that God brings His elect to salvation through an internal call which they are powerless to resist. The Holy Spirit supplies grace to them, the elect, until they repent and are born again. And then finally, the P stands for perseverance of the saints. Calvinism teaches that the elect alone cannot lose their salvation because salvation is the work of God the Father, Jesus Christ the Savior, and the Holy Spirit. It cannot be thwarted. None whom God has called will be lost. They are eternally secure. Listen, my friend, that comprises the stinking tulip doctrine. Uh, years ago, me and my family, my mother, her family, were raised in the Primitive Baptist Church. And uh, that's all she'd ever known. That's all she'd ever believed. She was one of the elect. And I, after I got saved by the grace of God, I witnessed to my mother and I got her straightened out finally on whosoever will. And she believed the words of the living God, not that just she was one of the elect. And I witnessed my aunts and my uncles, my cousins, and some of them are still in it. But anyway, before my mother got straightened out on it, she asked me to call her elder. They don't call them pastors, it's elder. Okay, and speak with him concerning the tulip doctrine. And I did for my mother's sake. And I told her what he was going to say before I talked to him for over an hour. And my friend, I graciously witnessed to that man. I went over the tulip doctrine step by step. And when I got to the end, I asked that man, have you ever been saved by the grace of God? Has the Holy Spirit of God ever convicted you of sin, righteousness, and judgment and showed you you were a lost, hell-bound sinner? And he's told me point blank, no. And I told him point blank, where well, you're lost and you're on your way to hell. He said, no, I'm one of the elect. The elect do not have to call on God. That's doing the work of God, he said. And I told him the word of God says in Romans chapter 10 and verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. My friend, it's whosoever will. If you're not saved by the grace of God, 
Become a candidate for salvation. Fall on your face before God and tell the Lord what you are, a lost, hell-bound sinner. And my friend, receive Him. John chapter 1, But as many as received Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name. So John chapter 6 and verse 37 all that the Father giveth me. That's all who will repent and receive the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Well, bless the Lord. Amen. That we can know that we've passed from death unto life because we have called upon the Lord the scriptural way and we have received Him. Well, may the Lord bless you. And good day.